I had two Arduinos back then. I fried one of them and I was left with another one. And I was like, oh my God, I need to, I need to buy more, buy more, buy more. And now I have like, what the hell, 10. Initiating. Welcome back to my daily grind. Create yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night. No time to lose one day, one step in the right direction. I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you if I can do it, you can do it too. Welcome back to the vlog. It is Monday, another day, another chance to push hard. And the topic for this one is my extensive Arduino components collection. So let's get it. But before we get started, love goes out to all my subscribers. Thank you for making my life special and worth a living to the max. So let me try to give back with a sweet, sweet video. The last weeks I went kind of crazy with ordering a lot of Arduino parts and I will go through every single one of them and this is not getting better and starting to freak me out because my face is still feeling numb the cut itself that's not the problem but yeah it's, it's not that visible but there is a lot of swelling going on I'm not even sure if it's broken or not if, uh, if you missed the vlog you can check out what happened here slowly get, but surely getting scared but anyways let's proceed let's get right to it and as you can see it is a goddamn lot of stuff and before we get into it if you want to learn Arduino stuff and get to know you know essential components then I would suggest that you get yourself a starter kit one of the more extensive ones because there are a lot of parts in them and you can then run through all of them and I won't go through all these parts in here just know these were not included very helpful for transmission belts and uh, this is yet another part for movement detection very helpful oh yeah microphones I think I ordered a few of those too and there should be a temperature sensor I ordered quite a lot of these two for you know home automation purposes but so far all i did was controlling valves solenoid valves you can check out the flamefish vlog well one of them here for that i also used a display to show me all kinds of things and i also controlled stepper motors for the camera slider you can check the latest well the last camera slider vlog out right here yeah now let's get a closer look on all of that so that was the first project the flame fist and for this project i utilized an Arduino Nano and let's actually start with those as you can see here I went completely overboard with buying Arduinos because back then I fried one of them and I was like oh my god I had two Arduinos back then I fried one of them and I was left with another one and I was like oh my god I need to I need to buy more buy more buy more and now I have like what the hell 10 and the tinier equivalent to Arduinos are these Arduino Nanos I found out about that a bit later they have this rather big USB and they have mini USB way smaller perfect for the flame fist so I exchanged that so far I don't know what to do with all of these I guess I will find out one day or another then here we have a few shields the CNC shields when I started with Arduino basics I thought you need them to control motors it is possible but it's not necessary what you actually need is a motor driver so I'm left with quite a few of them and I might use one of these when I get to my CNC but we will see about that. And there we have, I think this is called the ESP something something 8266. And that's yet another thing that I want to get into because this little chip right here, that's a Wi-Fi sh uh, chip. Freaking awesome. And for the camera slider project, I was forced to go, well, to switch to an Arduino Mega, which is this thing right here. Basically the same thing, but with a lot of inputs. As you can see here, there are 52 digital inputs, whereas an Arduino only has like 13 if I'm correct, yeah. They always say you won't max out an Arduino like that quickly, but it, that's not true. If you want to control multiple steppers and use multiple input devices, maybe with a screen, you will need one of those. So let's take a look at this project. As you can see, I'm currently using two, well, I'm only using one, but I plan on using three stepper motors and as you can see here, as I said, I'm just using the motor driver. They then need a capacitor, just like on the CNC shield. And to control the motors, I want to use, well, I'm using these joysticks. So I got myself quite a lot of those. And there are two types of joysticks. These bigger ones, which you can press. So they have a s integrated switch, basically. And then there is this tinier option. And this is like this PSP or something like that controller. Freaking amazing. And I think I will use this for the Flame Fist because if I'm correct, I'm not using the switch 
at all. I was planning to use a switch to go through another menu section, but I think it would be a better idea to just go smaller with the design. Use this one and just, you know, then you need to cycle through more options, but it's not like that's an important thing. And to display the options, I used an LCD screen. This one came with the starter kit and then I got myself quite a bit more. These have two lines and I think these have four lines, so they are quite huge and I will use these for the camera slider. And the reason why I bought so much stuff is, well, one day I want to, you know, I want to sell my stuff. So I thought, yo, let's just, yeah, let's let's buy more because mo one day I might need it. If you're interested in purchasing a flame fist or the camera slider, then check out my Etsy shop. Chances are that there will be something on there. So getting back to displaying stuff, here we have a LED segment display. I haven't used those, but they are looking interesting. It's like a battery display with different colors. And then here we have segment displays for numbers and stuff like that. Tiny variation of that. Next up, there are a bunch of relays and these are control, well, controllable switches. These little things are the coolers for the motor drivers and these little things are pins for the Arduinos. It just came with them. Then here we have a few DuPont cables with a different ends basically. Male to male, female to female and male to female. Now then there we have the valves and oh my God, nine freaking valves oh my god and they are fairly big and heavy and i also found these and um, well the plan is to exchange and use these for the flame fist because they are tiny and light that would be awesome so i'm left with a lot of valves i have no idea what to do with them but i will find out one day all of these valves they require a 12 volts and for that i also got myself a few battery holders and they fit eight 1.5 volt batteries, double A. And this will make up to 12 volts. That was a failed purchase right there, so we'll just skip that. This is literally useless. I want to use this light for my bathroom, but I think I won't control it with the Arduino, so that's skippable as well. Tools, let's skip that. Velcro clips, these are connections for the valves. Here we have coils for a voltage transformation. This is also covered in a flame fist video. Oh my God, and there is actually a separate tutorial about how to assemble these, well how to assemble a kit. I don't have a use for them because I'm still waiting for another type of transformators to use with the flame fist, more potent ones because these are kind of weak, they transform this 3.6 volts to like 15k something like that but it's like a pretty weak arc. Oh yeah and I got myself a few batteries. 18650, maybe for the flame fist as well, we will see. Okay, now here we have nuts and screws. This will be exciting because I want to use them for the belly songs, but very skippable for this video as well. Oh my God, and yeah, let's now let's get to the sensors. A really amazing sensor is this MPU6050. I think that's what you call it. It's a accelerometer with a temperature sensor. It's just amazing. And I'm using these with the flame fist as well. So I got myself quite a few of them. Well, only four actually. Oh my God, I need more. Here we have yet another interesting sensor. This is a, well, a door sensor. I haven't figured out how to use them yet, but there are basically two contacts and when they separate, they will do something, induce a current or something like that to tell you if a door has been opened or closed. And yet another very important sensor is just a switch. You call these limit switches. And if something approaches, I will use this for the slider. If the slide reaches the end, it will activate this switch and basically shut it off. Very important sensor. And there are a lot more in these starter kits. If you want to take a quick look, there are loads of them. The infrared receiver modules are very interesting. Oh yeah, and the RFID module. I'm currently working on a door lock. I want to unlock the door with an RFID ring. This is gonna be sweet. There are so many possibilities, literally it is endless possibilities. And well, let's get to the last part. There's a thing right there. I want to automate my door lock, this dead bolt right here. And for that, I want to use, well, I'm probably going to use a stepper motor. And that's what these things are. These are the tiny NEMA 17 stepper motors, and I'm also using them for the slider. And as I said, they need this motor driver and these. So I have quite a few of them left everything should work out fine. And these tiny ones, they are also used for 3D printing purposes, applications. For example, well, as you can see, all my printers are using the exact same motors. Well, this one is actually fairly small, if you're able to see this. 
the ultimakers right here they have bigger ones and with just a few of those and a CNC shield you can already make amazing stuff happen build yourself a 3d printer laser engraver maybe a draw bot and well there is also well the CNC option and for that you will need bigger motors especially if you want to work with a metal like aluminum or something like that so I already got myself four of these massive NEMA 23 motors way bigger way heavier but like this is not even the peak of <laughs> the motors well there are still the NEMA 32 motors and well it goes up quite a bit more I guess and for that okay this is actually for LED strips here we have a few cables for the motors having cables is also always a good thing for myself a two pole cable right here these are four poles because they need four. Oh yeah and these are also very helpful little buggers to connect stuff very helpful oh yeah and yet another very very important thing are transistors get yourself the real ones like the big ones the fat ones these are transistors as well but they will just fry i made this experience with the flame fist i tried to power the valve with a tiny transistor and it just it just got fried so as you can see here i'm using a bigger one like the relays this thing is a switch controlled by a well by the arduino and with the low current from the arduino you can control a higher current needed for the valves oh this is so amazing and yeah back to the cnc stuff these motors came with drivers and power supplies and i also got myself a spindle so all of that is literally stuff that you can use with an Arduino, aka Arduino components, and I plan on using this Arduino Mega for the CNC. That's the spindle itself, the motor, a lot of collets, and that's the control unit right there. And I will get to that in one of my next vlogs. Building myself a DIY CNC machine, and well, if you work with wires, shrink tubes are advised. All the Arduinos usually come with USB cables, so already have quite a few of those. But yeah, that is my collection so far. It's already pretty massive, but I'm still pretty, pretty new to this. There is still a lot that I need to learn, especially when it gets to coding. And well, I just need to learn a lot. And I'm definitely willing to do so because this is amazing stuff. You can change your life. DIY home automation, so many freaking amazing possibilities. And as I said, one of my next projects will be the CNC. Finally, I already ordered the parts one month ago or something like that. I got kind of scammed and I will get to that as well. I hope you enjoyed my little review of all the components that I bought so far. I have no clue how much I spent. The valves are around 10 bucks per piece so this is like it's, it's hard to say. This motor set was like 300 the spindle was like 250 so all in all I think around thousand euros and uh, plus the CNC part so yet another thousand euros but all in all like two grand. It's nothing compared to the printers over there because I paid around six grand for them. If you're interested in my printing room, then you can check out this vlog. I already did a room tour. So compared to buying pre-built products, this is majorly DIY. It's way cheaper and it's, well, it's more time consuming, but it's more fun and it's, it, well, it's simply amazing. So yeah, the future will definitely be great, but that's enough progress for today. Smash that like button the way I smashed tons of components on my floor. Oh my God, I need this space to build the CNC, by the way. Bang the bell like crapa so that you never miss Arduino stuff updates. Check the recent news on chrisviral.com and yeah, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>